All right, so we're racing YouTube because the hard drive is filling up. So YouTube has to upload so I can delete the last part so that we can continue here. Let me leave that file window open so I can delete it as soon as possible. All right. Okay, got it selected, ready to go. Okay, um, I was going to say remind me, but there's nobody here to remind me. So um, we'll just hope I remember. All right, um, let's bring this back up. All right, so we're running the data flow. And for some dumb reason, it says we don't have the thing that we just added to the other file. I will prove to you, Python, that we added that. Um, Wait. Wait. Oh, that was async helper. There it is. It's right there. Bullshit. It's right there. We must be on the wrong version of the package. How did that happen? How did that happen? Do you have a null version? Um, this command takes way too long to run. Everything takes way too long to run, probably because of this hard drive situation. Ah! See? This is why we're doing this inversion. Because this is just unacceptable. And you can also do... Are we, are we recording? All right. You can also do... Damn it. Wow. This will take forever, though, to list the help because of my hard drive. Wow, okay, that is really slow. All right, no errors. All right, and now this will just skip if it ever completes. All right, so we installed the run. This is a very common problem, very common problem when you're working with package development. And the reason why is here. This is the culprit. So all the plugins... This makes testing very complicated. Um, so all the plugins, um, they all need the main package, right? This is this is part of the second party stuff. This is part, I mean, this is the the whole the whole situation, right? Okay, right, so now you can see that it basically just said not install or error. Um, so we need we need we need okay. This is this is part of why the second party plugin thing is so complicated. Right. So in here, it says I require DFML right now, but we installed DFML and now it doesn't work. Right. So because we wanted to ha keep the development version installed. Right. And so there's like, I mean, there, the, the, this splits out into several different use. There's several different use cases, but mainly it's like I'm working on the package. I'm deploying the package. Right. And then we split into our, you know, I'm testing the package um, versus, and, and and that becomes that second party plugin. The second party plugin stuff is all about CI, basically, um, and trying to make make all the CI systems work together, right? Um, and the way that we do that is we're going to define a bunch of data flows to do the CI, and then um, we're going to execute them from from every uh, plugins, you know, GitHub Actions, right? Because they provide free compute. Uh, we're also going to look at like, can we just read in a GitHub Actions workflow represented as a data flow structure, right? And and that way we have interoperability there. You can run GitHub Actions workflows wherever you want. Um, so part of this, when we do that, we need to be able to declare dependencies and where they're coming from, right? So in this case, we're declaring the dependency, but we have an alternate what it was it execution environment? I think we called it the other day. Working on an example, same branch execution environments this is this is the commit that we just pulled down and i was worried about the re, the merge conflicts or rebase conflicts right so this this commit right here so local yeah so this is the example is local versus production data flow orchestration so basically and this is i'm going to plug i'm going to have an example up 
quickly here where we're going to uh, post-process some results in PyTest and submit for local or remote data flow execution to um, do um, post-processing, right? Arbitrary post-processing. Um, and, you know, basically the, the reason we have the split here is because we'll either say, hey, you know, kick off to the remote post-processing, which will then show how we run the HTTP service to do the same data flow as local post-processing. Um, and that way we can share the code base very easily. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and commit that stuff. Um, let's, first, let's pick, fix our packaging problem. Okay. So look at this. All right. So this is grab. Packages. All right. Okay. This is going to be great. So we're going to just grab all the ones that say site packages here, right? Cause these are all the ones we don't want here. This one is nice. This is a perfect example here, right? So this is what we want. We want it installed in development mode where it'll show us the Git repo hash and then whether the Git repo is clean or dirty, right? So if the Git repo is dirty, that means we have unstaged changes, um, right? So Git status. So we have modified files. So the Git repo is dirty. Um, and we, we, we like to know that, right? Because we want to know if we're listing all the packages. Well, what, what, what am I using, right? Okay, I'm using a development version, but... Um, you know, is, uh, is it, the, is it, is it, you know, <laughs> is it just checked out or is it, um, is it, uh, you know, uh, checked out and edited. Okay. So pip python m pip uninstall. All right. Wait, let me, let me look. So, so we basically said, you know, grab all the packages, show us their versions. Uh, oop, we want to grab V site packages or yeah, no, we do want to grab site packages. So basically tell me anyone that's installed in site packages by filtering out any, any lines in this that don't involve site packages and then grab the first, first delimited by spaces grab the first column that was output right so this would be column one this would be column two this would be column two this would be column three this would be column three this would be column four five six seven okay perfect so then we ran that uninstall command we should throw this somewhere we should put this in the um we should put this in the uh Oh, All right, so we should put this in the uh, documentation. Uh, docs contributing. Devon by. Jesus. Oh, hey, Tukrash. Hey, how's it going? Hey. All right, so how are you? How are you? What are you up to? All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, let's see. Let me let me make sure we get you on the recording here. So I've got a recording going. Oh, that reminds me. I have to go cancel the other recording here. So um, 
How do I move this over? Uh, crop. 700. Alright. Uh, 2700. Okay. Uh, I'm having to throw random numbers into the um, video recorder software to try to get both of us on the recording. Okay. Right. 500. 400. Okay, perfect. Okay, and bottom. And we'll say 12. Okay, there we go. Perfect. All right, so I think we got, and it's just it's doing that live. Wow, that's cool. All right. Um, so we, you want to talk about the Portland operations? Okay. Um, I think we, yeah, we'll talk about that. So I'm just wrapping up something um, here. Let me just save this. So what I was doing is if you install the uh, package in, uh, so if you go to do your like development setup, right, on the project um, and you install uh, you, you install a package in development mode, um, you need to uninstall the package if you've installed it installed it previously without the dash E flag, right? So, so we're just covering that in the documentation and covering how to find the installed um, plugins as well as the main package here and just delete them all at once. Uh, to uninstall uh, all packages of DFML not installed in development mode. Okay. All right, we're going to add that. Docs contributing dev and vi. Okay. Oops. Um, install non. So install the main packages. All right. And okay, so and then the next thing we just did was we wrote this. Um, we wrote this, which is a little helper function for test cases that will allow us to quickly do unit tests. And this is going to be relevant for your Portland um, data operations. Um, so. Okay, so um, and so what this will do is it takes a dictionary object, it takes a data flow object, and a dictionary object um, as the first and second parameters. And um, let me think. In this case, uh, add what is this called? Okay. All right, so it takes a data flow and, and, and a, a check object, and we'll look at that right now. Um, okay. Oh, but for some reason it's not showing up. Okay. DFL. Uh, watch the name DFL. Okay. Uh, wait, that was wrong. All right, so high level data flow run. Test operations don't watch an idea flow. Oh man, I wonder if this thing doesn't work here. Um, okay. Hmm. All right, this might not work like this. All right, we're just gonna put it. I'll just put it in the in the test we were just in. Okay. Um. We'll drop that last commit. Okay, so I tried to add this method to this class, but um, we're just going to have to have it as like a standalone thing because, um, yeah, because it's not working. So, um, because there, it creates a circular dependency issue trying to go into this high level. Um, and high level is where we define the run function, which uh, is responsible for, for running the, uh, you know, running the operations within the data flow. So, um, so data flow inputs run check inputs okay. I watch that. Oh, right, that's right. I forgot to reinstall. All right, so now we should have a working uh, development setup again. Um, 
I had a I installed one of the plugins and it overwrote the main package. Um, so, all right. So let's take a look at this issue here while we wait for this. Uh, so. Come on. It's not letting me type it. the stock. I think the stock has gone too long. All right. Um, so let's go find that issue. Is this uploaded? Okay, great. Okay. All right. So, have you gone over the um, have you gone over the uh, should I tutorial? Yeah. So, have you did you uh, play with doing the next one, which is no? Okay. Um, okay. So this is what we're. Yes. Yeah. So, well, no, not actually, sorry, not a data source. We're going to create operations and we're going to use those operations. So um, if we look at the architecture, so this, this falls into the top block on the architecture diagram here. Um, so we're going to, we're going to write some operations, which are going to go through the directed graph execution, the data flow execution to generate the data set, which we'll then put in a data set storage abstraction, which would be a source. Um, so, uh, first we basically just need to go write a bunch of functions to collect the data. Um, and a good example of this is the ice cream sales demo. Um, let's see. I forgot I should link this one. So we'll look at this one. Um, but this is a really good example too. So take a look at this and I'll put it in the, um, this is probably even closer to what this is. This is the ice cream sales is extremely close to what this issue ask is. Um, extremely close. It, it grabs data from the national weather service. Um, so it does a, it, it basically, it, it it, it downloads from this web these websites um, the population data and the um, you know what the temperature data um, and it then uh, so this actually yeah this actually uses CSV files as a source it it will download them and then load from the CSV file and then report that data out you know of of the individual operation. So it's just, it's doing a lookup, right? And then you're, you can choose now, now that you have this approach, you can choose to feed that into, you know, a, uh, it, it allows you to mix and match and combine your data sets very, very quickly. Um, and that's actually what we're doing right, right now. So um, what we're doing right now is we were looking at the automating classification demo um, and we were looking at this uh, combination of the should I demo, which is in the top right hand corner with the automating classification uh, uh, example and how we could take the data flow over here and combine it with a part of the data flow from the automating classification example. Um, and so we're going to extend that concept to check uh, Git repos for presence of GitHub Actions workflow files. Um, and so what you're going to see here is we're going to, um, let's see. So we're going to run this, uh, we're going to run the data flow, um, which right now is just, okay, yes, this has to be. So we're going to run the data flow using this new little helper function that we created. Um, and all the helper function does is say, um, for these inputs, this doesn't even highlight, does it? No. So for these inputs here, right? So we create the input objects for each one. Um, you know, I want the value to be whatever we set the value to, right? And, and here we're taking, we're creating a object which is representative of a Git repo and it just needs a directory. 
um, so that we can know where the files in the Git repo are. And then we go and we run um, tests, uh, or no, we run resource operations. So then we go and we run this, which all this does is check, you know, actually I don't need a bool on this because I was going to do rglob and then it didn't end up doing rglob because we can just check for the presence. So so basically this, you know, this grabs the, the repo that you pass it and it looks at the directory property, which we set to the root of our repo for testing. Um, and then it just checks for the presence to see if this, this workflows is a directory. Um, so this is analogous to um, so the safety check operations, right? And this, these are all operations, right? Um, and in the ice cream sales demo, you know, looking up the population, given the city and the state, that's an operation and looking up the temperature is an operation, right? So we can take those operations and we can, you know, feed them a bunch of inputs. And then by feeding them a bunch of inputs, we, we collect their outputs and we treat that as the data set. Um, and that way our data set is dynamic um, instead of just being static, right? And we can save it somewhere static if we want. Um, so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna, so right now we're just showing this um, and then we'll talk about the Portland data. So right now we're just showing this cause you'll, you'll see what, how, how it uh, gets, gets run here. So this would be, you know, this is very close to what you would be doing um, to uh work on that like this is this is almost exactly what you would be doing when you're working on this issue right um so uh test run on repos okay so okay so we want a new data flow here Or I think we can just do this, yeah. So we're gonna say uh, clone. Oh wait, did I copy it? No. All right. So and and this part you're you may not get into as much. Um, so we want to clone the git repo. We'll probably do the check if valid. But the the idea behind how you're gonna you know. Uh, write the test cases and instantiate the data flow. That's all. That's all the same here. Um, let me just see one second. I'm clear this. Um, okay. Great. I had to clear the recycle bin. All right. Or else we're going to run out of disk space here. All right. So we're going to. Okay. So yeah. So. Uh, we're going to download the Git repo. We're going to make sure it's a valid download link for a repo. We're going to download it, and then we're going to clean it up when we're done um, before we exit. Um, and then instead of feeding, you know, directly this repo object, um, we're going to uh, we're going to feed the URL to the repo. Um, so where you can say, you know, clone git repo dot op dot inputs URL. Um, right, so we're going to give it a URL, um, and, oh, uh, you know, we're actually going to do a smaller repo because our repo is kind of large. Okay, so let's see what happens. All right, so now all, all we did was basically say, check if I'll give, oh. Upper feature git dot features dot feature dot operations. Is that the right path? So all we did was import the operations, add them to the data flow. Operation give as, as a positional and in a kit. What? Operation given as a prediction. Oh, because it's, oh, yeah, we don't want to do that. Um, 
Okay, we'll just import these and it'll do it for us. All right, so there's a this op imps in using sysmodules name. Sysmodules name is how you get. It's the same as doing globals. If you want all of the all of the um, objects within the global namespace of a file, this tells you. Now, I prefer this over globals um, b because I think globals isn't something you can modify. So if you need to, exa for example, dynamically add a variable to the global namespace of a file, you could have like a list of strings and you could iterate over the list of strings and you could say, so you could do this. Set at her, and then you do A, or I'll just call it I, and then true. So all right. So now if you were to say uh, print A B C they would all it would print true true true. Um so you cause cause this is saying, you know, this is equivalent to saying um, a equals true because it's almost like you're treating the global namespace as an object and you're saying globals dot a equals true right but you can't you can't do this so you have to do this that's that's just a little trick for that um, and so you can do you know you can you can also look in you can also inspect it and see what's in it right and this is inspecting it to see if there are any functions that are operations so anything that's been decorated with ad op right so all we have to do is import these all we have to do is import them and now they're going to get picked up and we'll see that the git repo will get cloned and Okay, uh, dict object has no attribute. Reuse, uh, self-config reuse. Uh, we will hopefully see that. Let's see what's going on. Dict has no object, reuse, self data flow. Oh, how did it let us do that? We got. We actually have to pass the argument. Imagine that. <laughs> um, oops. Run on repos. So now let's actually run this with logging. So if you add this logging debug to any unit test that derives from async test case, then you'll get a bunch of log output. How am I doing on time? All right. So check it out. We're we cloned the Git repo. Um, and oh, it got mad. Give repo, repo SSH key definition not in context. Inputs. Why is it grabbing repo SSH key? Give repository. Why is that doing that? Okay, so I have it down here. I have this thing that's with shorthand to say grab all the outputs um, like and, and and make sure that there's there are all the outputs exist well all the outputs did not exist right so it's complaining now why it's complaining about git repo ssh key i'm not exactly sure so um So, and this is the kind of debugging that you'll be doing, um, you know, working on that issue. Uh, you'll you'll want to figure out, you know, how do I build, how do I build, and you'll look at things like, you know, you'll write your operations, which are going to be very similar to, um, to these operations here, right? Because they're going to do a download of some some data, right? Let's see what. Let's look at the data. Yo, know, there are APIs. Yeah. So then, you know, using that, that would be better um, because that, yeah. So use 
You should use the AIO HTTP library or any other async capable HTTP library, similar to as shown in the um, in the uh, metastatic analysis example, because everything runs, and this is part of that series of tutorials that I'll that I'll do. Um, uh, and if you have any other good async resources, I think there's some async uh, resources linked from the YouTube channel. Uh, I think that there's a playlist to, to learn more about async. It's not critical that you know all about async, um, but learning about async IL. But I think this should be public, yeah. Um, so this is a good video. You can check that out. It's linked off to YouTube. Um, uh, the link to the YouTube channel is under the Contact Us page. Um, and I also post the uh, recordings each time. So, um, okay, so yeah, so let's take a look. Okay, here's the Open Data API. Okay, yeah, and we can, I mean, you can do this for anything. I just happened to run into this website. And so, you know, this is this is the issue that got created. Um, so, you know, you did, you know, you could try this for, you know, try it for something else too. It's not critical that you do it for this this website particularly, right? But the goal is to build up, you know, a uh, the goal is to build up a, a a large set of functions that we can just do exactly like what I'm doing with right now, right? So um, public safety hazards, um, flood hazards, okay. So public view data table. Okay, how do we get access to it? Download CSV. Okay, so here's one. Yeah, this is just a, a CSV file. Uh, so this one you'll probably co you can probably copy exactly. Now I would say if they do have an API here, um, I mean. You know, I would give us first stab at this using the CSV files, and then and then you know maybe do a couple of these, right? Um, like you know, I don't know. Yeah, this I mean this they've done a really nice job. I talked to these people at one point. They're they're doing good stuff. Um, they're just sort of putting out all the data, right? It's like you know trying to do this this yeah this open data approach, and then see what people will do with it, right? And with DFML, we want to give people you know all the tools that they could just go start playing with some data, right? So they're like, oh, I want to, you know, see if I can build a model, you know, using TensorFlow to, uh, you know, analyze the temperature data, um, you know, versus, uh, you know, the number of people walking, like the, the number of traffic on that street, right? If, if like, you, they'll be able to just put those two things together, just like we're doing right now. All they have to do is import them in the same file and all of a sudden they'll get run together, right? Um, so uh, and then they'll be able to do machine learning on on new new data sets that 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 you don't even have pre-canned right um could, could be could be interesting um so okay so right now we're trying to figure out you know why so we use this one operation we threw it in the data flow um and now we're trying to figure out well why is this thing why is this thing oh it's because i wrote this in the wrong place so this thing is saying, I don't have a Git repo SSH key. Oh, I must not have tested that. Um, I don't have a Git repo SSH key. So I can't, um, you know, I, I, you, I can grab, because we asked it, where did we do it? So you can see here, we passed it this um, Git, Git single says, you know, Git, it should be Git multi. Um, Git single says, grab me one value which matches the like, grab me any value which has a which has a, a definition any value that was generated so the way that this works is basically it saves everything when you run right and then you query it afterwards to determine the outputs right so each function just pro focuses on producing its stuff right and and that's you know where you you'd go and you'd, you'd say you know hey you know what what is what does it mean to um You'd probably grab one that downloads the data set or maybe, yeah, I don't know. It depends, right? You'll probably want to use that ice cream sales as an example because you'll want to say, well, what actually makes sense for me to extract? You know, should I provide this as just a pre-canned? Because there's a couple, yeah, there's a couple options. I think 
right now, these are almost just data sets actually looking at this. Um, I thought there was more of a, um, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I have to, to uh, take this call real quick. Um, or, shit, okay. Um, okay, wait. All right, so I think these actually might be data sets. Let me, I'll, I'll call her back. So, um, so I think, yeah, I think you're right. I thought it was APIs, um, but if it turns out that, it, so if it is APIs, we should write operations. If it turns out that it's not APIs and it is, um, and, and, and it's all just CSV files, for the ones that are CSV files, we should do um, data set source. We should use this. Um, okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. So, yeah. So, so whatever you think, you know, basically use your best judgment. If you think it's better fit as this data set source, do it as a source, right? If you have a standard CSV file, you can wrap it very easily using this existing method, right? And then we'll just create operations to pull out of that source. Um, but if the, if it rep if it presents itself more of an API, like, Hey, you know, like this lookup thing, if they have something that's lookup temperature given, you know, zip code and month, then that's more of a call the API type of thing where we would write an operation. All right. Okay. I'm sorry. I have to run. Um, I hope that that gave you some more clarity. Good talking to you today. Have a good one.